Hey guys, what's up? My name is Gabe. This is Games with Gabe. If you watched the last video, then you know that the point we got to uh, with this Pong series is uh, we have this ball bouncing and the AI follows the ball and it moves and the ball will bounce off both the paddles and go through if it misses one of the paddles. So in today's video, what we want to do is if you notice the ball when it bounces off the paddle is very rigid. There's no any sort of like change in the direction of the way that it's traveling or anything like that. It literally just bounces off exactly the same way, which makes for a really boring game. So what we'll want to do in this video is make the bounce a little bit more interesting by using some math to calculate a new direction for the ball to travel in. And so in order to do that, we're going to have to treat the ball instead of like a direction, we'll treat this like a velocity. And so literally, I'm just going to say refactor this. Um, this is in ball.java. So we'll just refactor. Instead of saying ball.directiony, we'll change this to vy. And instead of saying ball di direction x, we're going to say vx. And this is just going to make it easier so that we know what we're talking about whenever we're looking at these things. So if we run this, it should run exactly the same. We'll notice bounces off the bottom, bounces off the paddle. Okay, cool. And then what we're going to want to do, so this is just checking to see if the, the velocity in the y direction is positive. And we're actually going to want to check and see if it's just greater than or equal to zero, because it could be something different than one is what we're going to find out. And then velocity y times equals minus one. That's fine. Then we'll change this to less than zero. Whoops. See, we'll say, we'll say if it's less than zero and then times equals minus 1.0. That's fine as well. And then instead of saying if it's if the velocity in the x direction is is negative one, we'll say if it's less than zero and then check all in here, this is all perfectly fine. And then if it is greater than or equal to zero, and then that should all be fine. And then if we run this, we should still get exactly the same thing once again. So we run this and yep, bounces perfectly fine. Cool. Okay, the reason we did all that is because it's going to make it a little bit easier to conceptualize what's going to happen in a second. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go over the uh, math of what we're going to do, and then we're going to code that up real quick. So let's see what the math is. Okay, guys, so let's determine what the math of this ball should be. So first, before we determine what the math should be, we should figure out what behavior we want to happen. So let's say we have our paddle that looks like this. And what I'm going to say is if the ball hits the center of this paddle, then I want it to fly back out directly in line with the paddle. So just like a straight line. The closer it is to the top of the paddle, I want it to fly more this way. And then the closer it is to the bottom of the paddle, I want it to fly more this way. And then I want there to be a range of everything in between those two when it hits on any of the other sides. Okay. So basically what we're going to be doing is we're just changing the angle of the ball wherever it hits relative to the center of the paddle. Knowing that, we know that we just need to find a new angle and then change the ball's velocity components according to that angle. So we would get a new component in the x and a new component in the y according to this angle theta. And then we can use those new components and change the ball's velocity and it should fly off in some direction. So first of all, let's normalize this. We want this to be our zero. We want this to represent positive one. And then we want this the bottom of the paddle to represent negative one. If we normalize this, then we can just multiply the whatever value the ball hits, wherever it hits inside of here, we can multiply that by the maximum bounce angle. And then that will give us a value of negative of the maximum bounce angle to positive. So like say we wanted to bounce at 45 degrees maximum. Um, when we get this value normalized between negative one and one, then we multiply that by the bounce angle. We'll have it between negative 45 degrees and positive 45 degrees. And that should be the bounce angle that the ball will bounce up. Okay. In order to do that, we have to normalize this hit location. So we know that this center point, that center point of the paddle is equal to, so the paddle's center y is equal to, and then we know it's equal to the paddle's y plus the paddle's height over two, okay? That's the paddle's center y, okay? Now, if we want to figure out where the ball hits it according to this, um, let's subtract. So say the ball hits right here. If we subtract the ball's y plus the ball's, so if we subtract the ball's center y 
and then we should get a value between zero and the paddle height over two because we're just we're taking out everything up here. So let's subtract the ball's y plus the ball's height over two. And then that should give us a value between zero and half of the height of the paddle, which is almost what we want. And then if it hits down here, what's that? That's going to give us negative pat height of the paddle and zero. That's going to give us a range between there. So we're almost there. We just need to divide now. So we'll say the normal of the paddle's y, or we'll say the normal of the intersection, okay? So the intersection normalized. Intersection normalized equals wherever, whatever this value is, over the paddle's height over two. And that will change this value from a value between uh, negative paddle height over two and paddle height over two to a value between minus 1.0 and 1.0, okay? And I realize you can't see that last part now, <laughs> but I'm just saying, so we're just transforming it from uh, that range to negative 1.0, 1.0, which is exactly what we want for this range. Okay, now that we have that range, we can figure out the angle. So theta is equal to that I N times the maximum bounce angle. So we'll just call that um, max. So if we multiply this value by the, the maximum bounce angle, then we'll end up with a range between negative max and positive max. So we now have our angle, our bounce angle. Okay, now how do we get the velocity components from that bounce angle? Okay, so we now have our theta in this triangle. And what we want to figure out is what is the new Vx, what is the new Vy? Um, we'll call this hypotenuse. So from trigonometry, we know that sine of theta is equal to um, opposite over hypotenuse. So that's Vy over H. We know that cosine of theta is equal to Vx over H. So if we multiply the H to the left side, then we can get Vy and Vx. So we know that Vx equals, um, well, we'll do Vy over here. Vy equals sine theta times h. Vx equals cosine theta times h. Okay, now we have the velocity components. What is this h value? This h value is the ball's maximum speed. We know that because we just want the ball to travel at the same speed. We just want to change the direction. So we know h, we know theta because we just calculate theta up here. So now we can get the new velocity component in the y and the velocity component in the x. One last note is that we want the velocity in the x to flip depending on which direction it was traveling previously. So we will then multiply vx by negative the sine of the previous vx. That way, um, and we'll say that's a times equals, that way, uh, if the ball is traveling to the left, it will bounce to the right with the appropriate angle. If it's traveling to the right, it will bounce to the left with the appropriate angle. Now that we have all the math in my horrible handwriting, we should be able to figure out and code this and see if it all works as we would expect. So let's code this now. Okay, so now that we have all the math under our belt, we can change this code right here, which is simply changing the velocity in the x and changing the velocity in the y according to a static value. Um, actually, we can leave this guy because this is just bouncing it off the top and the bottom of the screen. And we're fine if that's just bouncing, literally flipping the velocity in the y direction. So what we're focusing on is this one. If it hits a paddle, what's the new uh, velocity components it should have in the x and the y? Let's create a new function and we will call this um, this will return a float, which will be an angle, or we'll, we'll call that a double. We'll say calculate the angle, uh, calculate a new V velocity angle, okay? That sounds good to me. It's a little bit of a mouthful, okay? And so what values do we need? Well, we need the paddle, uh, which we have. Uh, we need which paddle it is. So we'll say rect paddle. And then we also need the ball, which is this class. So we already have that. So that should be enough for us to get this all done. Okay, 
So what we said, we said that we need the relative intersect with the y of the paddle. So let's calculate that real quick. We'll say double relative intersect y equals, and this is going to be the paddles, paddles y plus the paddles height over 2 minus the balls y, which is this. Um, yep, this is the ball. Okay, so this dot rect dot y plus the ball's height over 2. And we got to do this dot rect dot y over 2. Okay, so that's a relative intersect y. And now we want to convert that to a normalized value. So normal intersect y. This will uh, clamp it between minus 1 and 1. And so we'll just say is relative intersect y over paddle dot height over 2.0 okay so now we have the normal intersect of the y and now we want to get theta which is literally just going to be a double theta equals the normal intersect of the y times we'll say constants dot ball speed so we'll have the same speed but we will change the angle so this is the angle with the same speed or wait no <laughs> not the ball speed we want to change this according to the max angle which we don't have so we'll create that real quick, go to constants, and we'll just go right down here, say public static double, and this is a final double, uh, max angle, that's what we called it, is equal to, and then we'll say 45 degrees, okay? We're keeping everything in degrees, not worrying about radians here. All right, so now we have theta, and now we wanna calculate the new Vx, the new Vy. So we'll return this theta, and then in here, we'll say instead of doing vx equal times equals minus 1.0, we'll say double theta equals, and then we'll say calculate new velocity angle. <clears throat> and this is going with the left paddle. So left paddle. So that gives us our theta. And then vx should actually be, so we'll say um, new velocity in the x component is going to be cosine of theta. So math dot cosine of theta times, and then we're gonna wanna do h, which is the ball speed. So we'll say um, constant, so this is where we use the ball speed. Okay, and then double, whoops, double new vy equals, and we'll say math dot sine of theta times constants dot ball speed. Okay, and then we will say that vx equals, so first of all, let's get the sine. So um, We'll say double sine, old sine equals, and then uh, Java has this function called sinum, which gives you the sine of the number. So it'll return uh, 1.0 if it's positive, minus 1.0 if it's negative. So we'll get that of the Vx. So we'll get the sine of the current Vx, and then we'll say that this dot Vx equals new Vx times negative one of the old sine. So that should flip it in the x direction and give us that new velocity x, which is what we got. And let's actually wrap these, this guy in an absolute so that we get that as a positive value no matter what. The y though, on the other hand, we're gonna wanna just leave as is. So we'll say this dot vy equals new vy. And then that should be good. And then we're literally gonna do exactly the same thing down here. So I'll copy and paste that, except we want to do the right paddle in this case. And then this should all theoretically work. So let's see what happens. So if we run this, ball goes, bounces, and it goes way out of whack. So let's see what the heck is going on there. Okay. Okay. So why the heck did the ball go all crazy like that? Well, turns out, so we said up here that this new VX is multiplied by the ball speed already. And then down here, we're multiplying by that speed once again. So Let's take this out, and then we're also going to have to take it out of all of these calculations. So real quick, just going to take all of this stuff out, wherever it says times the ball speed times dt. Take that out because we're basically doing double the effort, and that's throwing off the calculations and making the ball go completely crazy. So we'll take that out, this one out, and this one out save that 
And then I'm also going to change the velocity up here because it's going to go super slow if we don't. So we'll change this to like, uh, say, 10. Make this minus 200. See what happens? <laughs> it's going to go like really fast, I think. Okay, yeah, so it goes like that. Bounce is good. Bounce is good off of his paddle. Let's let's see what happens. Oh, bounces in the wrong direction. Let's see. Bounced off the right direction off of him. So we might have. Okay, so after a little bit of digging around, there was a couple of things that were wrong. First of all, um, this we were calculating the balls y when we should have been saying this dot rec dot height over two. So that was a big uh, wrong thing. And then uh, another thing that we were doing wrong was we were returning the degree, the angle in degrees. And so we should actually be returning this in radians because uh, this sine function from the math library is expecting it to be in radians. And then last thing we had to change was negative here. That way it was uh, rotating it appropriately. So now if we run it, if it hits the bottom of the paddle, it bounces down and if it hits the top of the paddle it should bounce up and then it only bounces up according to your maximum angle okay so that should be it for the bouncing of the ball it was a little bit rough but we finally got through it and it all works properly and so in the next video what we're going to do is we're going to implement a score counter and then we're going to implement a simple main menu screen and then that should be it for this pong game all right thanks guys if you like this, please hit like and subscribe and stay tuned for the next episode. Thanks. See you.